things have sparked this uh, thought process or conversation that I'm about to embark on, knowing not which direction it's going to go. But started with my drive to school with kids this morning, and uh, of asking them where they are, where they're at, what's happening with them, uh, their relationships. And what's going on in the teenage world? What's happening with these kids? Because one of the things I started realizing uh, through the, the art of the message we have today and one of the things um, that I could potentially do with teaching my children, especially through the podcast, is what kind of message do we want to teach them and leave them with? What is, what is most important in life? And, and there's so many messages and things that we can embark on to teach our children. But when you think about a child's journey today and where they are in their personal life, think about all the stressors these kids are going through today. And... And we had some young kids come in the office today, and I was just asking them, how's life? How you doing? And this kid's, you know, this kid's exhausted. He just finished up exams. He's in, he's in college. He's 18 years old, and he's trying to figure things out. And it really dawned on me is that's, you know, it starts a lot younger, our emotional stability, who we are, where we are in life. And I've been there. We've all been there. If, you know. Most people listening to this, you know, in their, their 30s or 40s and, you know, maybe some 20 years. You've still been there. You're in the middle of it now. And I was listening to a, uh, an interview the other day with a pastor, and they were talking about the holiday blues. They were talking about seasonal depression, and it really got me thinking um, as to what is that? What is the true cause of it? Is it really, you know, the, 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 the darkness and the, the lack of sunlight that's going on? Because if it was true, if that was the cause, then would not everybody have it, especially up here in New England. <clears throat> so, you know, it, it, you sit back and you think, as in, this pastor started agreeing with the people he was talking to, that he has seasonal depression too. And the whole conversation almost turned into full agreement and excitement that they were, you know, they're all depressed now. It's December and Christmas is coming and they're excited that they had their group discussion going on and they're all just unhappy. And it, and it made me think, you know, how can these guys be so unhappy, especially with this type of interview that was going on? You know, these are Christian-based people, and I'm thinking, aren't you supposed to be happy, abundant, and fruitful? I mean, maybe that's my own ignorance. Maybe I'm an idiot. But I really didn't understand, and I want to know. I want to understand more as to why this happens with people. And as I came in my office, I, as I often do as I was just thinking, you know, I pulled a book off my bookshelf, and it's called The Greatest Miracle in the World by Og Mandino. And it was a book that I read. I read this book back in 1998. Actually, it was December of 1998, because I always date the books when I get them, and I first open the first page to start actually reading it. And how ironic that is. That's, uh, geez, 21 years ago. And to think about the place I was in in my life at this moment of time, what I wrote on the first page here, the secret of how to control our mind for our benefit. The author writes in this, or whoever wrote in this, this is a book of joyous hope and promise. You will never forget from reading this book the four simple rules that can help you perform a miracle in your life. And I want to really wonder if people understand the miracle of their own life because I feel like I've gotten to the point where I did and there's a part here where I'll explain that to you. But I'm going to go through, I've kind of thumbed through some pages where I made highlights. It would be kind of cool to kind of float through this book and... and Open up your thoughts, and, and, and please don't be afraid to go ahead and just comment on this when we post it and email it and open up a discussion because this is a can of worms, man, and this could transform people's life. 
First thing I marked off here was I am old, but I am quite strong. And most certainly it is worth our efforts to relieve the problem. Carlyle wrote that every noble work seems at first impossible. <coughs> Excuse me. Every noble work seems at first impossible. Carlyle was a 19th century English essayist. So he was a writer. And, you know, I don't think people set out to say, I'm going to create a noble work. I think they find their passion and they find a purpose in life and they start pushing forward. And that work becomes noble. That work becomes something that uh, people recognize. And the odds are it's because it helped change their life or add value to their own life. But if we simplify this as to what if that noble work was just finding your authentic self, finding you and your purpose, analyzing where you are in your walk in life right now, and are you living the miracle of your life? Because isn't that the greatest miracle in the world is living to our fullest potential? And if we're going to create the noble work of put your name in the sentence, I'll say Steve Justin's life, knowing that every day I wake up and take a step forward, it's a step towards that proverbial grave. But what will I leave behind? And as I was driving to the kids to school this morning, I realized that I got to teach them a way or share a way with them, and they're going to make their own choices, make their own mistakes. But hopefully through my wisdom and experience, and that's why I share this, it can help people avoid stuff that I've been through or other people have been through to make their life better so they can find their walk in life and find their noble way and be their authentic self. For those of you that are just joining us, I'm going through Ogmandino's The Greatest Miracle in the World book. It's absolutely, it was pivotal in my life, and I read it back in December of 1998. He sends here, it, it is difficult for me to put into words, yet I am positive that certain pieces of music Certain works of art and certain books and plays were created not by the composer, artist, author, or playwright, but by God. And those whom we have acknowledged as the creators of these works were only the instruments employed by God to communicate with us. Think about that. So when you, when you study a lot of great works and great people and amazing people, they reference the voice within, that something resonated within themselves that woke them up to a purpose, a noble cause, a way, their own inner miracle, and it created their art in life. And that's what he's talking about here, the artist, the author, the playwright, the composer. It could be mom, dad, whatever it is. And he's positive that these works didn't come from the said composer or artist himself, but through God, a higher power, something, a greater energy than any of us that is implementing in us, perhaps that's why our spirit was put on this planet, to fulfill a greater purpose. And as I look at my teenage kids and I'm asking them on the car ride to school today about where, you know, what, what, what can we share? What is hot in these kids' lives now that they can learn about? This is it. It's these kids to resonate and understand that they're trying to find their walk in life. But they don't have to work so hard if they can get quiet and listen within, to find that voice within that spirit that's going to resonate with them and talk to them and guide them, guide them on their path and find their way and find their artistic expression in life, whatever that is. And it doesn't have to be so hard. We then go on and he starts talking about, and this is a conversation that's taking place in the book. Ah, uh, but they do, Mr. Og. Most humans, in one way or another, they have lost their dreams, their ambitions, their desire for a better life. They have surrendered their fight for self-esteem, and they have compromised their great potential. They have compromised their great potential. They have settled for a life of mediocrity, days of despair, and nights of tears. 
They are no more than living deaths confined to cemeteries of their choice. People are trapped within their own mind, within their own body, within their own soul. Yet they need not remain in that state. The key word is state. You have the power to change your state. They can be resurrected from their from their sorry condition. They can each perform the greatest miracle in the world. They can each come back from the dead. So whether it's someone suffering from anxiety, depression, some kind of illness, they have it, as long as you have a breath, they have it within to heal and change the story and become the greatest miracle in the world and resurrect themselves from the dead. And there in those simple words is the simple secret. Techniques and methods which supply their own lives to become anything they wish to be and to attain all the true riches of life. And I feel that's what I want to share with my kids is to let them know that they have every gift within themselves to obtain all the riches in the world. Emotional, physical, spiritual, well-being, happiness, joy, awesomeness. It's within them. It's not an outside-in job. It's not a teacher being proud of them for getting a good grade or mad at them for getting a bad grade. That's all part of the process. That's not the end result. It's part of the journey. It's all part of the journey. And when we wake up to that mindset that it's all part of the journey, this collaboration, that there'll be good times and bad times, maybe we're not getting depressed. The seasonal depression they talk about because it's winter here in the Northeast. Maybe the season doesn't shut us down. It becomes part of the process. This is why I got my kids into skiing so we could get outside and ski. You could get into walking, snowshoeing, getting outside, doing something. Who knows? But change your state is what we have the power over because we control our brain, our mind. From the book, I'm afraid that what you say is true. Still in this day of soaring prices for paper and metals, I would imagine that a rag packer or a junk man could do quite well for himself. However, I am not that sort of rag picker. I seek more valuable materials than old newspapers and aluminum beer and cans. I search out waste materials of the human kind, people who have been discarded by others or even themselves, people who still have great potential. That's why I'm here. I want to find those sick and suffering people, those people who have given up hope and show them a way to open up to the possibility to wake up humans within themselves to find their way and their potential. To these people that have lost their self-esteem and their desire for a better life. When I find them, I try to change their lives for the better, give them a new sense of hope and direction, and help them return from their living death. How many people do we know are living death? Which to me is the greatest miracle in the world. And of course, the wisdom I have received from my Hand of God books has helped me immensely in my, what I call it, profession. So if you're just tuning in for the first time, we're reading Og Mandino, who was one of, one of my favorite authors as a kid. Ag Mandino had a rough life. He was, he was actually suicidal. He lost his family. He became an alcoholic. I hope I get the story right. His wife left him, took the kids, and he was walking the streets one night, and he was down on his luck, and he wanted to buy a gun. He was going to take his own life. And he couldn't afford a gun. And it started to rain. He walked into a library, pulled a book off the shelf, and it was called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And he sat in the library where it was dry, and he read it from front to cover, from cover to back. Read the entire book, and it woke him up. Woke him up to his purpose. Woke him up to his potential. And he wrote a whole series of books. Whole series of books. First one's called The Greatest Salesman in the World. It's not about selling. Amazing, amazing book. And they're little tiny books. You want to get your kids some gifts, birthday gifts, Christmas gifts, whatever. 
Get them Ogmandino books. I tell people, go to the bookstore and stand in the aisle, look at Ogmandino's books, and grab the one that resonates with you. But I would say start with the greatest salesman in the world. These are things that helped me on my journey as a young kid. I didn't have a Buddha sitting there telling me what to do and day in and day out. I had this voice inside of me that was guiding me saying, go read this. And as you start down this journey, you start opening books and listening and reading, it's going to open other doors, other possibilities. He names books within his books that you turn around and you go, I've got a thousand books in my basement. But this is where our kids, our teenagers, this is what they should be doing now. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, carrying these books around, reading them, delving into it, thinking, questioning the journey, their, their existence, where they're going in life. He goes on to say in the book, we come puppets and be begin to suffer living deaths. How many of you feel like a damn puppet? It may be praiseworthy and noble to sacrifice your life life to a cause or a business or a happiness for, of others. But if you are miserable and unfulfilled in that lifestyle and you know it, then to remain in it is a hypocrisy, a lie, and a rejection of the faith placed in you by your creator. You know, people wake up and they start suffering from depression and anxiety. And they go to somebody who puts them on drugs to deal with depression, anxiety, and they end up on drugs that have side effects and create other things. This is the paradigm that we live in. Instead of stopping and saying, why is this happening? Do I hate my job? Do I hate my existence? Am I not happy with it? And what do I have the power to change in my own life? Because if waking up every day is a miserable experience, we have to sit down and get honest with ourselves and say, why? And what do I have in my power to change? And I'm telling you, 99.9% .9 of the time, you have 100% power to change your state that you're living in, in your own mind, your own existence, and what you choose to do day in and day out. And if what you're doing, your walk in life, is not making you happy, commit right now to change that, to seek people out, to help you and coach you and show you a way and bring you down a path to open it up and find this greatest miracle in the world, which is you and your path, and your existence. You have it in you. We can't let the system take it away. They sit our kids in school and they tell them what to think, what to say, what to do, what's wrong, what's right. It's all BS. We need to open their minds to think for themselves and discover themselves and who they are. But the problem is most parents are too damn busy trying to find their own way or just existing, making a job to put food on the table. And for those of us that are there, that are living in abundance, whether it's emotionally, physically, spiritually, we have to reach out and help one another. That's why God put us on this planet, not to sit back and just pass people by, but try to bring as many people along the journey as we can. There's no greater blessing in the world than to watch people heal and grow into the miracle that God created them to be from day one. Our failure is a universal sickness always originating from the complex of either anxiety, guilt, or inferiority. Again, failure is a universal sickness always originating from the complex of either anxiety, guilt, or inferiority. The three standard emotional problems recognized by the most students of psychiatric studies. So the study of psychiatry, they realize that anxiety, which is fear of the unknown, not knowing what's coming. Guilt, you know what, you made a freaking mistake. You did something, maybe you hurt someone emotionally, whatever, and now you're guilty, and you carry that shit around with you day in and day out, and it tears away your spirit. Or inferiority. How many people do we know that you have close friends at one point, and then you start succeeding, or you're crushing it in life, and they get pissed off, and it makes them feel less than, and they suffer from inferiority. And they try to tear people down who are doing great and succeeding because it makes them feel less than. Listen, that'll tear your life apart. It's called jealousy, man. Don't go there. I see patients coming in all the time suffering from anxiety and depression, and it's just fear of their own life, and they're not expressing themselves to their fullest potential. Instead of getting around people that are successful, crushing it, killing it in life, and saying, how can I be like that? How can I grow more? How can I get more out of myself? How can I succeed? How can I kick ass in my own freaking life? Again, 
That is the greatest miracle in life, is when we find our purpose, our abundance, our way. And we can teach that to our kids. So our kids aren't walking around anxiety, depression, ending up on dope because they're anxious about going to school. Or their emotional well-being and they can't sleep at night. Or maybe they've got too much snap, chat, shit going on that's tearing them up emotionally. And they get confused on their identity and who they are and they lose their path. As a parent, it's our choice whether we're going to step in and teach them how to love and be abundant and kick ass in life or get lost in our own misery and our story and all the crap we're carrying through from our own life, that's stopping us from being our authentic self, our greatest miracle in the world. But we don't have to do that. We control our mind. We control our way. We control our own destiny and hence our kids' destinies. Right here, this rocks. This is from Sterling Moss. After he quotes Thoreau, that men were born to succeed, men and women, don't get offended, were born to succeed, not fail, to the point that a man could accomplish any goal, you can accomplish any goal if you're willing to pay the price. Now, here we go. we got New Year's resolution shit coming up, and most people write the same crap. A year goes by, and they're actually gained weight, lost more money, they're in more debt. They don't accomplish half the stuff they wrote down because they didn't pay the price, man. You didn't take massive action. You didn't follow a strategy. You didn't surround people holding you accountable. He would repeat Moss's quote. I was taught that everything is attainable. Everything is attainable if, if you are... Uh, if you're prepared to give up, to sacrifice, to get it. What do you have to give up today to get where you want to be tomorrow? What is holding you back today? Is it the person you're hanging out with, the things you're drinking, the things you're eating, the stinking thinking in your brain, and how you're leading your mind on its path? What do you got to give up today to become what you want to be tomorrow? Whatever you want to do, you can do it. If you want to do it badly enough. How badly you want it. And I do believe that I believe that if I wanted to run a mile in four minutes, I would do it. There was a time where the four-minute mile was unattainable. No one was doing it. Bannister did it. He was the first one to go out and do it. And within a month, 20 other people broke the four-minute mile because he showed the possibility. He put it into people's consciousness that they can do it. Think about that when you're raising kids. They don't know what they can do or can't do unless we guide them. And I do believe that if I want, okay, I would have to give up everything else in life, but I would run a mile in four minutes. So if you want to do it bad enough, you give up, train 100% of the time, you could probably achieve it. I believe that if a man wanted to walk on the water and was prepared to give up everything else, he could do that. I don't know about walking on water. One guy already did that. That's not me. I'll let him have that claim to fame, brother. Plus the thing is frozen. I ain't walking on water. I'll leave that to Jesus. He's my man. But here's the deal. And I like this. This is called the pilot light. And I was sharing this with a patient this morning, which got me thinking. <clears throat> Everyone else in the world still has their own pilot light burning inside of them. You've got a pilot light. It's like your spirit burning inside of you. That may be very diminished in some. But this I could tell you, it never, ever goes out until you die. So long as there is a breath of life remaining, there is still hope. As long as you have breath, there's hope. As long as your kids have breath, there's hope. And that's what we rag packers rely on. Imagine that. Just give us a chance and we can provide the fuel that will be ignited by any pilot light. What fuel is igniting your fire? Who are you surrounding yourself that's giving you power in life? A human being is an amazing and complex and a resilient organism capable of resuscitating itself from its own living death, which is the greatest miracle. Many times it is given the opportunity and shown the way. You got to give yourself the opportunity. We got to give our kids the opportunity to find their light within themselves, to find that power, that hope, that resiliency that God gave us. You know, every single one of you listening to this was nothing but a sperm racing 
the race of your freaking life. Millions of sperm racing, and you made it, baby. All the others died off. They got too acidic. They were too slow, and you beat their ass and made it there. You won the greatest life race of a lifetime, and it's what gave you life. It's what gave you power. And then there was a little explosion that took place, and we were two cells, four cells, eight cells, 16 cells, trains of cells that built you in nine months. And that intelligence that built you inside of your earthly mother's womb, that built our children and our spouses, moms, women's womb is still there. That intelligence doesn't leave the job. It doesn't go ahead and build you in God's workshop in the mom's belly and just disappear. That baby is still there. That intelligence is still there. It's on the job 24-7 or we'd all be dead. If it wasn't there, you'd all be dead from the sneeze that's happening in the cubicle next to you because that body wouldn't be able to adapt. It wouldn't be intelligent enough. The next germ coming out would kill every single one of us. But it's still there. And when we realize we have that power, our kids have that power, they have that energy inside them, to crush it and be abundant, to live their miracle in life, that's when the freaking magic happens, baby. It's just we got to keep all the other bullshit around us away. The stuff that's trying to steal our freedom, steal our mindset, steal our soul, drag us down to a lesser level. We can't let that into our kids' brains, our minds, their intelligence. We got to teach them to be abundant. You know what, baby? You're having a bad day. Don't take a little puff of that thing to try to make yourself happy. You don't feel well, don't pop a pill from the outside to try to get through it. Experience it and wonder what put you in that position. What do you need to change in your personal life to build yourself from within, to be powerful and not take away your energy, not deplete your energy, but to build you up and be the best freaking you. So we're going to start to wrap this up here. And we've had many people listening. We're doing a Facebook Live here. It's going to go on our YouTube channel. At Dr. Steve Justin on YouTube, this is going to be a podcast. Wake Up Humans on iTunes and, and Spotify. Check it out. Click the fifth star. Light us up, man. Let's transform freaking people's lives, and let's help them find their miracle inside of them. And I'm going after the teenagers and the young kids. I want to ignite them and wake them up to their greatest purpose in life and let them know that life is freaking abundant and amazing. Let's teach our kids to rock it in life, kick ass in life, and be fired up in life. Let's do it as a tribe, man. we got people listening to this stuff. Canada, Australia, Spain, it's absolutely amazing. Imagine if we get more abundant, fired up kids, what our governments are going to look like in about 20 years. Woo! Freaking awesome. I'm getting fired up. i got to go work and adjust people in a couple of minutes here, but we're going to wrap this up. You have returned from a living death. You will feel self-pity no more, and each new day will be a challenge and joy. You have been... Born again, but just as before, you can choose failure and despair or success and happiness. The choice is yours. The choice is exclusively yours. I can only watch as before in pride or sorrow. I kind of feel like that's God talking to me. Steve, you're either going to crush it and I'm going to be fired up or you're going to suck and be depressed and anxious and I'm going to be sad for you, brother, but I'll still love you. Remember then the four laws of happiness and success. Count your blessings. Proclaim your rarity. We're all rare, man. We're all special. Go another mile. Keep pushing forward. Never give up, baby. Use wisely your power of choice. 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 And one more. To fulfill the other four, do all these things with love. Love for yourself. Love for all others, and love for him. Wipe away your tears, reach out, grasp another's hands, hug a loved one. I'm adding this. This isn't in there. I'm kind of paraphrasing stuff. And realize you are the greatest miracle in the world. Parents, if you don't realize you're the greatest miracle in the world, please get your head out of your ass and realize it now. Freaking love yourself, man. And then go back to your children and just be a better you today. No matter what happened yesterday, no matter what happened last week, be the new you today. Love those kids. Love your spouse. Hug on your kids. Love on them. And teach them how to become a better version of themselves. 
They don't need to make anyone proud on this planet but themselves. I'm not here for my kids to have me be proud of them. I want them to be proud of themselves. And when they screw up, it's on them. It's not on me. I love them that much. And we will push them and teach them and train them and bring them to be a higher level expression of their life on who they're going to be. Because that's my role in life, man. And that's the greatest miracle in the world. When we watch other humans heal from within and get their breath of life back and kick ass in life, baby. Have a rockin' day. God bless you.